So welcome all to week 10's tutorial for the course Essential Mathematics for Machine Learning. I am Pintu Kumar. I am a PhD scholar at IURIT Bombay. Today I will cover topics related to week 10 content cover in the course. So the topics that I intend to cover today are some basics of set theory. This would be a very brief introduction because I think most of you would know. If there are some points that you don't know about this topic then please uh, feel free to ask those points and I'll try to clarify them. And then we'll uh, talk something about some basics of probability where I'll also talk about uh, discrete random variables and continuous random variables and their properties. Okay. So first of all, uh, for the sets, I'm moving very fast. So at any point, if you're not familiar with uh, the terminology that I'm saying, please either uh, type it in the chat box or unmute yourself and stop me there because I think these are uh, some basic stuff that you might have done uh, in your class 11, 12. So I'm not going uh, for that. Okay. So, so most of you know what a set is. So uh, as NCRT says, sets is a well-defined collection of data. So if you are constructing a set out of something, you must be sure or you must know a rule on basis of which you can assign an element to a set or you can say that a element don't belong to that set okay so examples of a set would include uh, for example set of natural numbers set of real numbers these kind of things okay so uh, the terms that i think you must be familiar with are unions of two sets so let's say you have a set a and a set B. So a union of two sets A union B means uh, you will include elements of uh, both sets A and B. Okay. So if element is either in set A or it is either in set B, then it would be an element of A union B. So A union B would look something like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. Okay. Now, uh, Let's say, uh, what is intersection of a set? Intersection is of A, intersection B is, uh, it is a list of elements uh, which is in both A and B. So, which is common for both A and B, those elements belong to the intersection of these two sets. So, intersection of these two sets is just a singleton 2. Okay. Now, uh, what's a complement? So, for complement, uh, first of all, you used to, uh, you should know what is an universal set. So, an universal set is the uh, set which contains all possible elements uh, that uh, exist. Okay. So, for example, if I define my S uh, as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as my universal set, then I can define the complement of A. So the complement of A would be so the complement of A would include those elements which are not in A but are there in the universal set. Okay. So the complement of A would look something like four, five, and six. Okay. So so I'll uh, just give you some more terminologies. Something called as null set. So a set having no element is called null set. Okay, so anybody has any doubt in these uh, terms that I just uh, discussed? Okay, so there is something uh, known as De Morgan's law, uh, which is related to sets. So this symbol C on the top is for the complement. So this De Morgan's law says that if you take A union B and you take its complement, this is same as uh, A complement intersection B complement. Okay. And the another form of De Morgan's law is that if you take complement of A intersection B, it is same as A complement union B complement. Okay. Okay. So there are two rules that you have uh, done in uh, class 12, but there is uh, a question related to this in assignment. So I'll try to discuss it slightly in length. So let's look at this property. Okay. So let's say you have two sets, uh, 
which are your A, this is your set A, and this is your set B. Okay. Now you want to count the number of elements in A union B. Okay. Then how can you can you do it, right? So let's say uh, you do. Uh, so you want to count the number of element in A union B. You do sum of number of elements in A. Okay. So you take number of elements in A. To it, you add the number of elements in B. So if you look at this uh, this Venn diagram, you can see that this portion of A intersection B uh, is getting repeated twice when you are adding uh, these the number of elements in A and number of elements in B. So the next step would be to subtract the number of element in A intersection B. Okay. So this is a pretty simple formula for number of element in A union B. That is number of element in A plus number of element in B minus number of element in A intersection B. Why a minus sign? Because this portion is getting repeated twice. Okay. Uh, so you can extend this to uh, number of element in union of three sets. So this is number of element in A plus number of element in B plus number of element in C. Then you have uh, uh, intersection of two sets minus uh, number of element in A intersection B minus number of element in B intersection C minus number of element in A intersection C. If you draw a Venn diagram and you see in the similar fashion we saw, you will see that we have uh, like uh, left out this portion. So we again at the end add number of element in A intersection B intersection C. Okay. So th th this is the formula that you might have might not have seen in class 11th or 12th, uh, at least in the CGS syllabus. So this is uh, the number of element in arbitrary union of uh, not arbitrary but for any finite uh, union of sets. So rather than two and three, now we are sort of generalizing things. So what is this? This would be again the sum of all uh, sets. So if you have, for example, this is something like a1 union a2 and a n, then you will take sum of all sing uh, one size sets. So this will be number of a1, number of a2, and so on till number of a n. Okay, then for all the sets uh, that you take intersection of two sets, you will have negative sign. Okay, so it would be negative n of a1 intersection a2 minus n of a1 intersection a3. Okay, and so on. So one thing that you should remember whenever you are taking intersection of two sets is that your, uh, let's say this is uh, n of a i intersection a j, then your i must be smaller than j. That is, uh, you do not want to repeat uh, this thing that again you are taking a j intersection a i. If you look at the, uh, uh, like when you had two elements, then you did not include again a number of uh, element in b intersection a, you just wrote it once, right. So that is what we are trying to do over here also that we will write this uh, intersection only once that is why we are uh, like imposing an extra condition that my i should be strictly less than j. Okay. So you will subtract all the intersection of two sets okay, with condition that i is less than j. Then you will add all the intersection of size 3. Okay. Let us say this is a i intersection a j intersection a k. Okay, so over all i, which is strictly less than j, which is less than k. Okay, so you satisfy this condition and then you take sum of all the three uh, intersections. Then you again subtract the four intersections. So you will do an alternate till the time uh, you reach uh, the number of sets that you have. Okay, uh, any doubt in the content uh, cover till now? Okay, so here is a small question based on what we did. Okay, hmm. so it says that 
uh, in a survey conducted on 1000 customers, okay, it was reported that 750 like uh, product X. Okay, so let's try to uh, draw an Venn diagram of it. Okay, so it says that the survey was conducted in 1000 customers. So, your universal set contains 1000 uh, customers. Okay, so the number of elements in your universal set, so the number of element in this rectangular box that I have drawn is 1000. And it says that uh, it was reported that 750 like product X. Let's say this is the circle corresponding to your product X, then there are 750 people who like this product. Okay, and also there are 420 customers who like product Y. Okay, so this says what is the least number of customer that likes both the product X and Y. Okay, now if you sum up this uh, these two values, then you will see that 750 plus your 420 is uh, 1170, right? So it is exceeding uh, the number of uh, uh, people on which the survey was conducted. Okay, so why is it happening? Because we are summing this portion twice when we are summing uh, this blue circle and the purple circle, right? So what we know that number of element in A union B, okay, so this number of element in A union B uh, must be uh, less than equal to 1000 because the survey was conducted on 1000 customer. So this should be less than equal to 1000. Now this uh, is equal to number of element in A plus number of element in B minus number of element in A, A intersection B. Okay. So this should be less than equal to 1000. Now this is 1170 minus number of element in A union, sorry, A intersection B should be less than equal to 1000. So this means that number of element in A intersection B should be less than equal to 1170 minus 1000 which is 170 okay so this option is correct for you okay any doubt in this question okay So this is uh, this was a similar question to what is mentioned in your assignment. So anything that you want to ask related to the set theory portion that was covered this week, because now I would be moving to the uh, probability portion that was covered. So if you have anything to ask, uh, not just what I covered, but whatever was there in the lecture also related to the set theory portion, you can ask right now. Okay, then I'll move to probability. Okay. So, uh, what is probability? So, for me, what probability is uh, when you are not sure about an event and you want to make a prediction that a particular event would happen. So, the probability gives you an, a measure of how likely that event is uh, going to happen. So, how li likely it is for the event to occur. Okay. For example, if you have a coin and you toss it in the air and I have to say like whether it is head or tail, okay. So I can say that with 50% confidence that this is head, right. So there is a 50% likelihood or I would say 0.5 probability of coin being head, okay. So, so if you are performing some let's say experiment, for example, in the example I mentioned performing experiment would be to toss a coin, okay. So, the experiment can have several outcomes, okay. 
if you list all possible outcomes then you come up with something that is called as sample space so for example uh, if you toss a coin okay then its sample space would be head and tail so what are the possible outcomes that you can get out of it it is head and tail okay <clears throat> similarly uh, for uh, let's say if you uh, roll a die okay if you roll a dice then the sample space would be something like uh, 1 2 3 4 5 so these are the possible outcomes that you can get on the die when you uh, roll a die okay now uh, the next thing that comes after uh, the sample space is what is called an event okay so an event is nothing but a subset of uh, sample space okay event is nothing but a subset of sample space for example, uh, event can look like, so if you roll a dice and somebody says that uh, it is either 1 or 2, okay. So, uh, the event would be something like 1 or 2, okay. So, this is a subset of your uh, sample space. So, event can be a combination of possible outcomes or a particular outcome, but this is a subspace, uh, subset of your uh, sample space, okay. So now, uh, so the question is then how do you convert this to probability? So you want to uh, look at the, uh, your chances of getting this thing or the chances of an event happening. So how do you transform this thing to a number? Okay. So, any probability function P, right, can be defined based on three axioms. The first axiom says that the probability of an event, okay, can be between 0 to 1. So, if you are able to define a function which satisfies these three properties, for you that defines a probability, okay. So, it says that the value of this probability function should always be between 0 and 1, okay. This is my first axiom. Second axiom says that probability of the complete, uh, this S over here is the omega that we wrote, the probability of the complete sample space is 1. Okay. What does this second axiom mean? This second axiom means that you can't have an event which is outside of this S. Okay. So, what is S? S is the uh, collection of all possible outcomes. Okay. So, what is the probability that anything among the all possible outcome happened so that is one right so if you have let's say a coin coin tau, co toss okay so what is the probability that either head or either tail occurred so the probability would be one because there is no other uh, option for the coin to happen okay so this is what the second axiom says now the third axiom says that Okay, so here there is a term called mutually exclusive event. So, mutually exclusive event is are the events which can't occur together. Okay, so, so I'll just define what is mutually exclusive event. So, if let's say E1 and E2 are your events then they are called mutually exclusive if E1 intersection E2 is empty. Okay. So, this is what is meant by mutually exclusive event that these events can never occur together. Okay. So, if you have some uh, finite number, even countable number of uh, mutually exclusive event, then the probability of their union is nothing but sum of their probabilities. So, this is the third property that uh, these uh, this probability function should satisfy. Okay. 
So if any function is satisfying these three axioms, then that is known as a probability function. Okay. So an example can be so let's uh, take a case of a roll of a die. Okay. So what is the sample space that you have? So sample space would look something like one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, right. Now, uh, you want to define probability for every event, right. So, let us define probability for single tail event and then we can extend it to the probability of every event, ok. So, let us say the dice was fair and the chances of occurring every element on the dice is same. Then, my probability of 1 would be same as probability of 2 would be same as probability of 3 and so on, which would be 1 by 6, ok. So now based on this rule what I have defined, I can extend this to probability of any event uh, that can occur. So let us say somebody asks me like what is the probability of 1, 2 or 3, like occurring either 1 or 2 or 3. Then I can see that this set that I have constructed 1, 2, 3 is nothing but 1, 2, union 3, right. And these all three sets are mutually exclusive because their intersection is empty. Then I can just take the sum of these probability. So this would be probability of 1 plus probability of 2 plus probability of 3. That is, again, uh, this would be 3 by 6, that is half, okay. So, uh, th th this is the basic idea of probability. Uh, anybody has any doubt in this? Okay, so we move to something known as uh, conditional probability. Okay. So, uh, I think. Uh, I discussed uh, probability a little bit, but most of you would be aware of it. So, what is conditional probability? Let us say you have two events E and F, okay. And uh, initially, you have to find, let us say, probability of E when you are given no information about it, okay. So, let us take an example that you have a dice to roll. So, the possible outcome is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, some E is the event that your uh, the number on the dice is even number, okay. So, what is probability of E? So, there are three choices where you can get even number on your dice, right. So, the probability of E would be 3 by 6, that is half, right. Now, let us say uh, some of you, uh, uh, like you are two friends playing and the second friend asks you to guess and he asks you what is the probability of E. You would guess that it is half, right. Now, he gave you an extra information. So, F is the extra information that he is giving. The information that he gave you is that the number is less than 3, is uh, let us say less than equal to 3. Now, he is saying that after the extra information that he has given, okay, what is the probability of E? So, that is what is known as the conditional probability. So, it is represented by uh, this uh, line here. So, this means that given f that you, ha you have been told that f has already occurred. So, you are sure that f has occurred. Then what is the probability of E? Okay. So, in this case if you see that you have been told that uh, the uh, number is less than equal to 3, then you have only one even number over here and you have three choices. So, what is the probability of E given F? This would be 1 by 3, right. So, uh, let us say E and F are any two arbitrary sets. So, let us look at this uh, thing. So, when you uh, talk in terms of Venn diagram, let us say this is your S, uh, yes, right. So, 
uh, if you look in terms of uh, let's say this is your sort of uh, Venn diagram then what is probability of E probability of E is nothing but number of elements in E let's say this is sort of discrete if this would be a continuous uh, sort of set then this would be something known as measure I am just quoting this uh, you need not know uh, okay let's replace measure by area okay so this would be area of this circle E divided by the area of S that would be the probability of your E over here it would be number of element in E divided by the number of element in S okay so now after you have been given uh, so that you have an extra information that f has already occurred okay now your sample space or the your universe reduces to just f because you know that the f has already occurred okay now what is the uh, probability of e given f probability of e given f would be that the number of elements of e inside f that is your probability this is uh, number of elements in E intersection F divided by the total number of element in F right because now your reduced universe is just this much so you know that F has already occurred then you want to find what is the probability of E so you just look at uh, this much portion this is the sort of intersection right of your E and F divided by number of f this is your formula for uh, probability of e given f now if you divide uh, denominator and numerator by uh, n of s uh, if you divide both of them and you divide the denominator also then you get nothing but probability of e intersection f divided by probability of f so this is the formal definition of your conditional probability that probability of E given F is nothing but probability of E intersection F divided by probability of F. Okay. So uh, let's try to apply this example on the example that we solved uh, sort of by hard force and see if this uh, thing is applicable over here. So now uh, if you look at this thing, uh, what is probability of E given F? So here E was the event that uh, the number that I obtain on my dice is an even number and F was the event that number is less than equal to 3. Okay. So what is E intersection F? So there is only one element, right? So probability of this would be 1 by 6, right? Now what is my probability of f? Number is less than or equal to 3 is 1, 2, 3, right? This is 3 by 6. So I obtained 1 by 3. And this is same is what we obtained by counting uh, explicitly, okay? Any doubt related to the definition of uh, conditional probability or what does this mean or how can we solve problems based on it? Okay, so here is a question based on conditional probability. So the question says that a bin contain five defective that would fail immediately if put in use, 10, 10 partially defective, so that would fail after a couple of hours of use and 25 acceptable transistor. Okay, our transistor is chosen at random uh, and put into use. If it does not immediately fail, then what is the probability that it is acceptable? Okay, so uh, let's use uh, some notation here. So let's say D denotes that the transistor is defective. Okay, so P denotes that it is partially defective. and A denotes that it is acceptable, right? So now what is asked 
that if it does not immediately fail so it is given that it has not immediately failed so that means the transistor is not defective so we are given b complement okay and what we have been asked to check what is the probability that it is acceptable so this is the quantity that we have to evaluate okay so uh, so what it would be that is probability of a intersection d complement divided by probability of uh, d complement right this is what we have to calculate so what is a intersection d complement so so the what is the total number first of all transistor this is 10 plus 5 15 plus 25 this is 40 transistors that we have so a intersection d complement would mean just the a because let's uh, draw this uh, sort of diagram so there are five defective all of them are uh, now sort of ex mutually exclusive events 10 of them are this is defective this is uh, partially defective this is 25 and this is acceptable so what is a complement uh, a intersection d complement that would be just this portion so this is 25 by 40 okay and what is probability of d complement uh, d complement has 35 elements so 35 by 40 this is nothing but 5 by 7 okay Okay, Ishita, uh, can you please uh, tell me which portion of uh, this uh, conditional probability was not clear to you? Uh, you can type it also if you want. If it was not completely clear, then also I can visit. But if it is some specific portion, please. Okay. So. Okay, I'll try to do it once more. So, first of all, uh, was the notation clear to you? What does this, uh, let's say, probability of A given B means? Okay. So now the derivation part was not clear to you. That's fine. Okay. So let's say you have two events. This is A. This is B. This is A. This is B. Okay. So what is probability of A given B? We have to calculate. Right. Now, what does A given B means that you know that B has already occurred, okay. So the information available with you is that B has already occurred, okay. So if you look at the total number of uh, possibilities, that is now uh, the total number of possibilities that can occur, okay, that is N of B. So, N of B is your total number of outcomes, okay. And if your B has already occurred, what is the uh, possible number of outcomes for A? Now, because B has already occurred, this portion can't occur, the portion I shaded in green, okay. So, the portion that can occur is your uh, this A intersection B, right. So, what is a possible number of outcome? Your possible number of outcome, outcome is number of element in A intersection B, right? Is this much clear? That your possible number of outcome when you talk about 
uh, p of a given b is a number of element in a intersection b and total number of outcomes is your number of element in b okay so what is probability probability is possible number of outcome divided by total number of outcome that is number of element in a intersection b divided by number of element in b okay now what we want to do is this definition is also correct okay but what we want to do is we want to write this in terms of some probability okay so that when uh, we are calculating our life becomes a bit easier so what we do is we divide the numerator and denominator by number of element in your uh, sample space okay so you divide your numerator and as well as your denominator by number of element in your sample space so now this would be nothing but the upper part would be probability of a intersection b because this is your total number of outcome in n intersection b and this is your total possible number of outcome okay and the denominator would be sorry this should be b right this is b in the denominator this would be probability of b right so that's how we reach to the definition of probability of a given b that is probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b am i clear uh ishita was i clear okay thank you okay let's see if i have some more questions on this yeah so uh i will zoom out the question and we'll give you 2 uh, 3 minutes to solve just try solving the question so that it is more clearer to you all okay then i'll solve the question sir uh, please explain the previous question a bean content have defective uh so the last question yes sir okay okay i'll do this question again because i okay so i'll read out the question first so a bin contains five defective so that will uh, fuse or fail immediately after it is put in use 10 partially defective that will fail after a couple of hours of use and 25 acceptable transistors if a transistor is chosen at random what is uh, so and it is put into use if it does not fail immediately what is the probability that it is acceptable so let's say you define three events so first event is that your transistor is defective okay second is that your transistor is partially defective and the last one is uh, that uh, it is an acceptable transistor okay so what what is asked in the question so it is given that it is it does not fail immediately okay so it is given that the transistor does not belong to uh, the set of transistor that will fail immediately so you are given that d complement has happened that the transistor didn't fail immediately okay so what is the probability that it is an acceptable transistor this is what you have to find okay so this is the question mark that you have to find so what is the formula for this as derived above so this is probability of a intersection d complement divided by probability of d complement okay now let's calculate probability of a intersection d complement so what is the total number of transistors sorry so the total number of transistors that you have is 5 plus 10 15 plus 25 that is your 40 okay so among these uh, so this would be number of element in a intersection d complement 
divided by total number of transistors that is your 40 right this would be probability of a intersection d complement just give me a second yeah now what is uh, the number of element in a intersection d complement so if a transistor does not fail immediately what are the chances either it will be partially defective or it will be acceptable transistor so what is the number of element uh, in this set this is 25 right that it is actually a good transistor acceptable transistor divided by 40 okay now what is probability of d complement so d complement means number of element in d complement divided by 40 right so the number of element not in d is uh, 40 minus 5 this is 35 35 by 40 so what is this uh, conditional probability this is 25 by 40 divided by 35 by 40 this is nothing but 25 by 35 so this is 5 by 7 now is it clear Whoever asked that time, is it clear to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now let's go to the next question, and I would expect you guys to solve this. And I'll give you three minutes to solve this. So I'll start attempting it at 6 50. Okay, Ram will uh, confirm if somebody else answers or whenever I solve. Okay. I don't know the answer, so I can't tell you whether it is right or wrong right now. Others also, please try and let me know what you guys are getting. Okay, so we have two different answers. You need to check which one is correct. I'll give you one or two minutes more.
Okay, so you guys are getting 0.18, and I also think that might be the correct answer. So for others, uh, let me solve this question. Okay. So here also we have two events. So the question says, Miss Perez figures that there is a 30% chance that her company will set up a branch in Phoenix. Okay. If it does set up, she is 60% certain that she will be made manager of this new operation. Okay. What is the probability that Perez will be a Phoenix branch office manager? Okay. So there are two events. First is that let's call it P that the company will set up a branch branch in Phoenix. And the second event is that Miss Perez will be made a office manager, will be made a manager. Okay. So let's look at the information that is given to us and what is the quantity that we need to calculate. Okay. So the first line says that there is a 30% chance that her company will set up a branch in Phoenix. So probability of event P, so let's call it small p so that you don't get confused with probability, is 0.3. Right. And if it does, that means you are given that the company has already opened a branch in Phoenix. So the given condition here is if the branch is opened, so the event that has already occurred is P, then there is a 60% chance that she will be made the uh, manager of new operation. So this is probability of M given that the branch is opened in Phoenix. So this is 0.6. And what is asked? So the quantity that is asked is, what is the probability that Perez will be a Phoenix branch office manager? So the quantity that is asked is, what is the probability of this thing happening? That a branch is opened there and she is made the manager. Okay. So this is the question mark. So now, uh, if you look carefully at the formula of conditional probability, this is P of M intersection P, right, divided by probability of P. Now, you must know this, uh, right, that this intersection thing is commutative in nature. So, P intersection M and M intersection P is one and the same thing, okay. So, if you take this thing in the denominator of the left hand side, what you obtain is that the probability of M intersection P is probability of m given p into probability of p right so you are given with both these quantities so this is uh, nothing but 0 0.6 and this is 0 0.3 so you obtain 0 0.18 okay so 0 0.1 is the correct answer for this any doubt in this question Okay, so yeah, let's move to the next topic uh, that is known as, uh, that is something known as independent events, okay. So you call uh, two events A and B independent of each other if occurrence of one event do not impact the probability of another event, okay. <clears throat> so what does this mathematically mean, <clears throat> sorry. That let's say even if somebody says that B has already occurred, then the probability of A does not change. Okay, even with the extra information that B has already occurred, so it is not impacting your probability of A and vice versa. That if you are given something about A, then the probability of B does not change. For example, uh, let's say uh, there are two cities, uh, Mumbai and Delhi. If somebody says that it is raining in Delhi and he wants to, uh, in, he wants you to infer 
what is the probability of it uh, raining in Mumbai, then because these two events are sort of uh, not related, uh, yeah, I'll get to that, Ram, right? So, because these two events are not related, so uh, the probability of uh, it raining in Mumbai won't be affected by uh, the, uh, the event that it is raining in Delhi. So, these events sort of become independent to each other, okay? So, how do you sort of intuitively define independent events? That probability of A given B is your probability of A and your probability of B given A is probability of A, okay? Now, uh, let's uh, look at the uh, this definition that I have written over here. If you replace this by the formula of uh, conditional probability, this is this equal to probability of x. Now, uh, if you want to use this particular formula for your independent events, one thing that you should keep in mind is you have probability of b in the denominator. Okay. That means if this is 0, you can't use this formula because then your left hand side would be uh, not defined. Right. So, what people have proposed is they use an alternate formula. So, they take this thing on the right hand side. So, this becomes probability of A intersection B is probability of A into probability of B, right. So, this is the alternate formula that is more common and used. So, you can uh, define independence in this way also that if you, are, you have two events, then probability of A intersection B is nothing but probability of A into probability of B, okay. So, this is just uh, if you op, uh, like expand this uh, expression of P A, inter A given B, you will obtain this formula, okay. Any route in this, what is, what are independent events? Uh, I, Ram, I guess I answered your question, what is probability of A and B? So, intersection means and, so probability of a, probability of A and B is probability of A into probability of B. Okay. So, here is a question for you guys. So, just type it in the chat box. So, we talked about mutually exclusive event, right? What are mutually exclusive event? That E1 intersection E2 is empty, right? So, the question is, uh, if A and B are mutually exclusive, are A and B independent? So, you are given that A and B are mutually exclusive. I am asking you if they are independent events also or not. So, please, uh, whatever you think, please uh, type it in the chat. So, you are given that A and B are uh, sort of mutually exclusive and you are being asked whether they are independent events also or not. Yes, uh, somebody is asking something. Yeah. So, the correct answer is that they are not independent. In fact, this is totally opposite of uh, independence, right? So, mutually exclusive means that A and B can't occur together, okay? So, if you want to calculate, uh, let us say you are given B and you want to calculate A, then this is always 0 because if B has occurred, A can't occur. So, that means the uh, event of B happening is impacting uh, A a lot, right? So, they are not independent, but sort of totally opposite of independent, okay? And you can see it otherwise also so that uh, probability of A intersection B would be 0 because A1 intersection A2 is 0 and you want this equal to probability of A into probability of B and you are not uh, sure what is probability of uh, A and probability of B. So, you can come up with an example where these two values are non-zero 
and uh, you have got the intersection probability to be zero okay okay so here is another question so let's say a and b are two independent events okay then the probability of occurrence of at least a and b is given by so this should be at least one of a and b is given by uh, so you have to choose among these so, so the this is question is probability of at least one of a and b so this would be 1 minus probability of uh, none of A and B. So, the complement of this event is that at least one of A and B is that none of A and B occur, right? So, this probability is given by 1 minus probability of none of A and B, okay? So, uh, A complement intersection B complement, right? none of a and b means that a is not happening and b is not happening okay now because a and b are two independent events you can easily show that a complement and b complements are also independent events you can prove it right just using the uh, formula or the definition that i mentioned so this would mean that this is one minus probability of a complement into probability of b complement. okay so this option is correct so, if your A and B are independent, then your A and B complement are also independent and your, uh, yeah, and your A complement and B are also independent, A complement and B complement are also independent, okay, okay. So, because this is sort of a two hour long lecture. So, I will take a break of uh, 5 minutes. So, we will start again uh, with uh, this theorem of total probability and Bayes theorem in 5 minutes. So, we will start at 7, 8. Okay. So, just a break of uh, 4, 5 minutes so that you do not get bored.
Okay, we will begin. Okay. So, this green line, uh, the outer boundary, okay, that I'm now I'm uh, overwriting is green. Let's say this is your sort of sample space. Okay, a weird looking one, but let's say this is your sample space. Okay. Now, let's say your B1, B2, B4 is a partition of the sample space. What is meant by partition is that this breaks your set uh, in such a way, if you see that B1 union B2 and so on till B4, this makes your complete sample space, right? So, if you take union of all these B1 and B2, B3, B4, it will be the complete of your sample space, right? And the intersection of anyone with anyone, so Bi with Bj is empty, right? So, they are not overlapping and they are sort of covering the entire space. So, this kind of structure is called partition of any set, okay? So, for example, let us say this is your sample space. Uh, this is your B1, this is your B2 and let us say this is your B3. Then this is not a partition because uh, you have some overlap over here. This is not a partition, okay. So, just a second, yeah. So, let us say uh, you have a partition of this set that is your B1, B2, B1, B3, B4 and you have some event A and you want to find the probability of A. Okay, then this is given by probability of A intersection with B1 plus probability of A intersection with B2 and so on. And this is also intuitively correct, right? So, if you want to see the number of elements that you have in this A, that is nothing but the number of element uh, you have in A intersection B2, right? plus the number of element in uh, you have in A intersection B3, then number of element you have in A intersection B3, uh, sorry B4. And same thing translates to probability that it is same as uh, you take the, the probability of this much portion first, right? And you sum to it the probability of this much portion and then you sum the probability of this much portion. So, this is something that is known as a uh, theorem of uh, total probability. So, let us say you have, I will more formally write it. Let us say B i, so this is a collection, okay, is a partition of your sample space, okay. This is sigma. Then, probability of A is given by summation over i, probability of A intersection B i, okay. Now, we want to extend this definition or the theorem in terms of uh, conditional probability, okay. So, we know that probability of A given B i is probability of A intersection B i divided by probability of B i. If we take this denominator this side, we can replace uh, this thing by summation over i probability of A given B i into probability of B i, okay. So, this is a just a, another formulation for this, right. So, yeah, this is uh, what is your theorem of total probability. We will be using this uh, in our base theorem, right. Right now, it might not look uh, very important, but we will be using it in base theorem, okay. This is Bayes' theorem, okay. And probably the one of the most useful thing that you will encounter when you're, uh, using, uh, yeah, whenever you are doing machine learning, Bayes' theorems are lot used at a lot of places, okay. There is a very vast area that is uh, known as Bayesian learning and those things, uh, which are sort uh, many a times motivated by this Bayes' theorem. Okay, so let us look it look at it what is Bayes theorem. 
so this is probability of a given b so if you look at it uh, overall this is your base theorem that let, let's say you have a given b and you know the probability of b given a so you want to reach from a given b to b given a then this is what you use okay so this is probability of b given a into probability of a divided by probability of b okay so uh, let's uh, sort of try to derive it so you know probability of a given b we want to reach to the point probability of b given a right so this is probability of a intersection b divided by probability of b right now if you want to convert this thing into probability of b given a how can you do this so if we divide this top portion or the numerator by probability of a okay then we are done right so what we do is for the numerator we divide and multiply by probability of a we divide and multiply by probability of a and we have a probability of b in the denominator okay so this portion becomes probability of b given a into probability of a divided by probability of b very easy uh, derivation but very useful derivation okay so we will try to solve some question based on it and i think there are a couple of questions uh, in your assignments also okay so the question is uh, uh, just read the question with me there are three coins in a box one of them is two headed so uh, the coin is not a pair coin now on the both side we have head the shole coin right somebody is joining okay and the another coin is a fair one okay so the first coin was a two headed coin and the second coin is a fair coin and the third coin is a biased coin okay so there are 75% chances of head coming up so for the coin 1 we have two head coin 2 is a fair one so 50 50% chance and coin 3 has 75% chance of head and 25% chance of tail okay now the question is if a coin is drawn at random okay if a coin is drawn at random from the box and shows head so what is known to us is the outcome is head because it is given that the coin is drawn from the box and it shows head okay so what is given to us is that it is head then the probability that it is a two headed coin so what is the probability that the coin is the first coin this is what the question is okay now if you look at the information that was available to us so if it is the first coin given that it is the first coin what is the probability of head probability of head is one because both the side is head right so given that the coin is second coin what is the probability of head this is 0.5 because this is a fair coin and this is 0.75 right also uh, yeah so this is what is given to us and this is what we calculate we have we want to calculate now if you remember the base theorem when we want to switch from a given a to b given a we use this base theorem right so here also the information given to us is in form h given something and we want to calculate one given uh, h right so we use base theorem on it so probability of one given h is nothing but probability of h given one into probability of one divided by probability of uh, this would be h right so now if you look at these terms the first one is something that we know this is the term that we uh, the, the information that was already available with us okay if you carefully look at the second term so what it is so, uh, saying is that you had three coin in the box 
and you picked up one coin randomly okay so what is the probability of getting either coin 1 or coin 2 or coin 3 it is 1 by 3 for all three of them right so probability of 1 is probability of 2 is probability of 3 which is 1 by 3 okay so there is an equal probability of getting all these three coins so the second term is also sorted okay so this also you know that this is 1 by 3 the only thing that you need to calculate is probability of h so how do you calculate what is the probability of getting ahead when you randomly picked a coin uh, from the combination of these three special kind of coins okay so what is probability of h we here we will use uh, the theorem of total probability that is probability of h intersection first coin because if you look at now your sample space this is partitioned into three parts by either first coin or second coin or third coin right so this is probability of h intersection second coin plus probability of h intersection third coin this is nothing but using the base formulation so h given first coin into probability of first coin plus probability of h given second coin into probability of second coin plus probability of h given third coin into probability of third coin okay so the first thing that we know that this is one and what is probability of first coin this is one by three plus uh, second coin this is 0 0.5 into one by three and the third quantity is uh, uh, 0.75 right into 1 by 3 okay so let's uh, put this in uh, the formula so again this is h given 1 is uh, 1 into 1 by 3 right divided by this complete thing that we had okay so this is 1 into 1 by 3 plus half into 1 by 3 and this is uh, 0.75 is 3 by 4 right so this is 3 by 4 into 1 by 3 so we have lot of 1 by 3s here so we can take it common and cancel it out so we'll be left with 1 1 by 2 plus 3 by 4 this is nothing but uh, so we take 4 plus 2 plus 3 by 4 this is 4 by Right. I think this should be the answer. Yeah, so we have an option of 4 by 9 and that is the correct answer. Any doubt in this question? Anybody has any doubt in this question? okay so this this is uh, what was about base theorem we will move to random variable there we will just talk about expectation and variance so any doubt uh, till this point please uh, you can just clarify right now okay uh, i will motivate this uh, random variable by an example okay let us say you toss two coins okay uh, you toss uh, two coins uh, simultaneously okay so what is the sample space that you will get you will get something like head 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 tail tail head or head head right but now uh, somebody might ask you uh, what is the probability that i will get uh, one head okay only one head okay then what you can do is uh, either you can count that there will be two such possibilities and you can find two by four other thing is you can define a map okay you can transform this sample space into some numerical values based on your need okay so that numerical value is something that is known as your random variable for example when i said uh, that i want to count the number of heads so you can define a random variable as number of heads okay so for this particular example if you look 
what would be uh, the possibilities for number of heads this would be 0 this would be 1 and this would be 2 right and for every value of this uh, random variable you will have some associated probability okay so what is the probability that there will be zero heads so sorry uh, the sample space should have tt over here right tail t so there is one possibility out of four so this is one by four for one head there is two possibilities so this is one by two and for two head again it is one by four okay so this is how you define uh, random variables that from the sample space you sort of try to transform it into some numbers and you assign some probabilities associated with it okay so here is an uh, example another example so the example says uh, let x denote the random variable that is defined as the sum of two fair dice okay so you roll two dice so what is the sample space that you obtain this is a sort of a big one so this is one one 1, 2, right, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, right, here also you get 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 6, 1, right, at the end you get 6, 6, okay. So, this is the sample space that you have, this is a sort of very big sample space and if you are just interested in uh, the sum of whatever you get on dice why worry about this uh, big sample space right so you can define the random variable as sum of two dice right so what is the values that this sum can have so the minimum uh, value that it can have is your two when you sum one and one and you can go all the way till 12 right so you now also have some associated probability okay so what is the probability of x being 2 so you have only one possible outcome so this would be 1 by 36 what is the possibility for sum is equal to 3 so you have two possibilities now right so this was for 1 this is for 3 so this is uh, 2 by 36 now for sum is equal to 4 you have 3 possibilities right so for 4 you have 3 possibilities and so on uh, you can just uh, define uh, till the end in the middle you uh, somewhere at uh, 5 6 7 so this is 4 by 36 this is 5 by 36 you will get 6 by 36 and from here on it will reduce it. this will be 5 by 36 and so on okay so i can assign an arbitrary value to outcome of an event right so generally th those are numerical values and whatever values you assign uh, you have some associated probability with it okay okay so now if you have a random variable right then it can take two kind of values okay so either the values that it take is discrete so for uh, in the last two examples that we did <coughs> so the values that we obtained were discrete what is discrete that there is some gap between the values that we are obtaining so these kind of random variables are known as discrete random variables okay so and this probability function that we define on x right this thing is known as probability mass function for discrete random variables okay again if your random variables that you are defining are sort of continuous in nature okay for they take continuous value for example let's say this is your graph and this is your p of x and these are the values of x that it takes okay okay so if it takes continuous values 
then those are called continuous random variables. And for them, uh, the P of X that you define, that is not known as probability mass function, but those are known as probability density function. Okay. Or in short, you can call them PDF. Okay. And this is called PMF in short. Okay. The next thing that comes here is something known as a CDF of a random variable. Okay. This is the cumulative distribution. function okay so what is uh, cdf so let's say uh, this is uh, represented by generally uh, represented by small f both this probability mass function as well as your probability density function uh, and this your cdf is represented by capital letter f okay and many a times you will find it represented by capital letter f so f of x is x uh, sorry, this is, yeah, this is your probability of uh, your, uh, so let us say this is some point A, so x less than equal to A, okay. So, I will give you an example, okay. So, for this uh, pro uh, cumulative distribution function. So, this means that uh, probability that your uh, random variable that whatever you are getting is less than equal to A. Okay. So, let us take the dice example for simplicity. So, there we had uh, based on number of heads we obtain, we had a random variable taking value 0, 1 and 2. The probabilities were 1 by 4, 1 by 2 and uh, 1 by 4. So, what is the cumulative distribution function at point 1? This is the probability that your x is less than equal to 1. So, less than equal to 1 means that it is either 0 or it is 1. Okay. So, this is probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1. Okay. So, this is nothing but your half plus 1 by 4 and this is 3 by 4. Four. Okay. So, this is something that is known as cumulative distribution function. I have not uh, touched upon this uh, uh, random variables in very detail. There are many uh, important sort of examples also of uh, some structures that are related to these. For example, you have many famous uh, distributions such as Bernoulli distribution, okay, which are sort of useful uh, even in your machine learning tasks. Okay. For continuous cases, you have normal distribution. So, at any point where you model your noise in your machine learning models, the most go-to distribution for that is your normal distribution. Okay. There are a, like a family of uh, machine learning algorithms that are based on uh, your continuous distributions. So, I, I would not have done justice in the time allotted to me. So, what I can do is, I can refer to you a book where you can read more about uh, if you are uh, sort of really interested, okay. And uh, for others, I uh, will try to solve questions, uh, something which is similar to your assignment. So, who have joined uh, for assignments, uh, you can see the question that I would solve. But if somebody is really interested in uh, exploring more about the distribution, then uh, you can refer to this particular book. This is a very uh, sort of famous book by Sheld uh, Sheldon M. Ross. There are many books by Sheldon M. Ross, but I find this book good for sort of uh, beginner to intermediate level. So, the book is titled Probability and Statistics for Engineer and Scientist. So, uh, chapter 2 onwards, uh, you will find a lot of details about uh, this thing. Okay. 
my pen is not working ha ah, it is working now okay so you can refer to this book uh, whoever is interested okay the author is sheldon amroff this is a very common book so now we go to something known as expectation this is also called as mean okay or average okay so if you have some random variable okay so let's say uh, like when you talk of average you want to take uh, let's say average of uh, numbers 1 2 and 3 what would you do you would do 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3 right whatever value of it now if somebody says that the chance of one occurring is just 0.1 chance of two occurring is very high let's say this is 0.8 and chance of three occurring is also very low that is 0.1 and now he is uh, telling you to take a uh, sort of weighted average based on the chance of their occurring so what would you do is you will multiply them with their chance and then take the average okay here all of them had equal chance of occurrence right so that's why we were sort of what we were doing here is 1 into 1 by 3 plus 2 into 2 by 3 uh, sorry 1 by 3 plus 3 into 1 by 3 and then we obtain this formula if you do do just this much you will get something that is known as your uh, uh, expectation okay so this is what is uh, written here mathematically that expectation of a random variable is nothing but xi into probability of xi so this was the xi and the second row was the probability of xi that is the chance of its occurrence and we sum it up okay so this is what is uh, meant by expectation so here is a question so let's say x is the outcome when we roll a fair die uh, what is expectation of x so when we roll a fair die you get 1 2 3 4 5 6 all with probability 1 by 6 so what is the expectation of x so this is summation of i is equal to 1 to n xi probability of xi this is 1 into 1 by 6 plus 2 into 1 by 6 plus 3 into 1 by 6 and so on till 6 into 1 by 6 This is nothing but one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six into one by six, which is your six into seven by two into one by six. This is seven by two. It is three point five. So expected value of your dice roll is three point five, but you can never get three point five. Okay. So yeah, this is sort of what you get. Okay. So here is another question. i'll give you 2 3 minutes uh, you guys attempt this question then i'll uh, solve this question so again you have uh, you again roll a die okay so but th this die is not same as your earlier die it has one on three of the faces so on a regular die you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 written on it but in this form of die you have one written on three faces okay and two written on two faces and five written on the last one okay and you have been asked to find the uh, expected value for this random variable uh, when you roll the die okay so i'll give you time till 7:39 uh, please solve this question
Okay, I'll wait for one minute more, then I'll try to solve and see what answer I get. Uh, Ishita, uh, I think uh, the answer would be from the options only. So 2.167, uh, I don't think that would be an answer, but uh, I'll check the answers can also be done. But you can just uh, cross check your calculation. Okay, let's try solving these questions. Okay, so now if you have only 1, 2 and 5 on the faces, so your random variable can take only 3 values, that is 1, 2 and 5, right. And you have 1 on 3 faces, so probability of getting a 1 is 3 by 6, because you have it on 3 faces, right. Probability of getting 2 is 2 by 6. And probability of getting 5 is 1 by 6, right. So now if you take the expected value of x, this is 1 into 3 by x, 3 by 6. So this is x into probability of x plus 2 into 2 by 6 plus 5 into 1 by 6, okay. So this is 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 6. Uh, did I make some mistake? I think I have not. So this is 7 plus 5, 12 by 6, this is 2. Okay. So this is how you get 2. Okay. Okay. So here is a question. You are given with a discrete random variable w with probability mass function. So probability mass function is nothing but uh, the probability assignment that we did uh, just here. So this assignment is known as probability mass function as I mentioned earlier also. So this is given by w by 15, okay, for w 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So your w takes values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with probability 1 by 15, 2 by 15, 3 by 15, 4 by 15 and 5 by 15, okay. Then they are asking capital F of W 3.25. So capital F of W is the CDF that is cumulative distributive distribution function. So we have to find probability that my w is less than or equal to 3.25. So less than 3.25 would mean that it is either 3, 1 or 2, right? It's either of these. So this is probability of w is equal to 1 plus probability of w is equal to 2 plus probability of w is equal to 3, which is nothing but 1 by 15 plus 2 by 15 plus 3 by 15, this is 6 by 15 or 2 by 5, right. So this is the correct option, okay. Any doubt till this point? Okay. Okay, so this is related to I think conditional probability, I sort of have included it late. So let A and B be two events such that probability of A is given to be 0 0.6, probability of B is given to be 0 0.2 and probability of A given B is 0 0.5. Then what is probability of B given A? This is a very easy question I want you all to solve. So this will use Bayes theorem. I will give you 2 minutes to solve this. After 1 minute, I will write the formula for Bayes theorem. You can use it and before that, you can just do it on your own. Okay. 
just solve it and tell me what answer you guys are getting. Sakesh will confirm if somebody else also solved. Okay, so I'll just write the formula that you need to use. Probability of B given A is probability of A given B into probability of B divided by probability of A. So you have everything available with you. You just need to uh, plug in the values. So yeah, this is 0.5 into 0.2 divided by 0 0.6, right? So this is 0 0.0, no, this is 0 0.1 only, sorry. So this is 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.6, which is 1 by 3, right? So this was an easy question, right? Okay, so before uh, defining variance, uh, I'll sort of try to motivate variance. So actually, this <coughs> expectation and variance are not just exclusive to your uh, random variables, but when you sort of collect some data, let's say uh, you trained your model, okay, and you are getting some level of accuracy, okay. But many a times you have some randomness in your uh, training model, okay. So that randomness can occur due to your train and uh, uh, test split, okay. Or uh, for or you are using some uh, stochastic optimizer, okay. Or some sort of stochastic optimization where your data points are not in same sequence. So it is not necessary that uh, you get same uh, <coughs> same value for accuracy every time you run your model uh, based on the some stochastic uh, parameters okay so generally it is good to report your uh, ex uh, average accuracy you sort of train your model and test it let's say 10 times and then you report your average accuracy okay so let's say I'll mo motivate it this way, but variants are useful in lot lot other uh, at lot other places also. But I'll sort of motivate in this place. Okay, so you are getting an accuracy of let's say uh, ninety percent. Again ninety percent. Again you got eighty nine percent, and you got ninety one percent. Okay. So, if you look at this uh, model, then the average gets you to the 90 percent, okay. Another time when you trained, you got an accuracy of 80 percent, again you got 80 percent, you got let us say 99 percent and again you got 99 percent, okay. So, now if you look at uh, sort of this accuracy. So this would be also something around 89.5 percent. Now if you look at the average, uh, okay, average is very is similar to each other, right? But this model seems to be more trustworthy, trustworthy in sense that I can depend on this model to get 90 percent accuracy uh, in almost every situation, right? But the second model that you have trained is falling to the accuracy of 80 percent. So, this is not uh, that. Uh, so, stochastic parameter is a parameter that is not fixed but varies, okay. So, stochastic means something that is not fixed but varies. For example, if you 
train your model. So what is the first step that you do? You split your uh, train and test data set, right? So you say that 80% will be training data points and 20% will be your testing data points, okay? So the 80% data point that you choose in training data set is not always the same 80% that you will be doing again and again. You can do that, but what generally people do is they will uh, take some random 80% out of your complete data set and some random 20% uh, they will keep it as test data set. And again, if you are repeating the experiment for the second time, you take 80%. It is not necessary that you will get the same data point that you got initially. So if there is slight change in data point, then you that will reflect in your accuracy level also. There can be a slight change in data point. Okay. So uh, like the, in many, many other uh, part also, whenever you are training a model, there can, the situation can arise that when you are retraining that model, some values can change, right? Some parameter values can change. So that is what is known as stochastic parameters. Uh, was I clear? Okay. Uh, Ishita, was I clear? I hope so. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, Huh. So, the first uh, model, uh, Ishita, train and test are not models, but uh, part of your data set. So, uh, so I am not sure how well versed you are with any machine learning model, but when you start uh, your machine learning model, what you do is uh, you split your whatever data set is available with you okay into two parts one of them you use for training and based on whatever parameters you obtain after training you use the second part for your uh, testing purpose okay okay Uh, like if you are not very much aware about uh, this machine learning model, then I would uh, suggest you to either look at some uh, introductory machine learning, some starting one, two videos of any course, or you can look at the previous recording for this course also. Earlier I have explained these things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other term is that the first one is precise, but Mathematically, we can say that the variance is less in this case. I'll define the variance. So what is variance? Variance gives you a measure of how far your data points are from the average value. Okay. So in this case, if you look that your average value is 89.5. So the data points are very far from your average values. But in this case, they are very close to your average value. So for this case, you will have a low variance. So variance is the vari where, like the change in sort of uh, values. In this case, you will have high variance. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, okay. So let's spend one or two more minutes. So let's say what I said is that. Uh, the variance is the change from the mean value, okay? So if you calculate the change from mean value in this case, this would be 0 plus 0 plus this would be minus 1 and this would be also minus 1, okay? And there are 4 points, so let's divide it by 4. So this would be something minus 2 by 4, okay? So this is not the variance, but I'm just uh, saying uh, like evaluating what I said, okay? In this case, this is minus 9.5 plus 9.5, okay, uh, sorry, minus 9.5. Again, this is plus 9.5 plus 9.5. So this thing is summing up to 0. 0 divided by 4 would be 0. But I said that this case should have high variance, okay. Now what is happening over here is that I have large variation from uh, my average value 
but both the variations are in opposite direction. So their signs are getting cancelled. But we don't want this. So if there is a variation, we want to capture this change. Okay. So what we do is, rather than just looking at x minus your average, what we look at is, we take the square of this term. So then rather than looking at just this thing, we look at the square. And then this value would become 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 by 4. And this would become 9 by 5 square plus 9 by 5 square plus 9 by 5 square plus 9 by 5 square. And we read something as uh, 9 by 5 square. Now this value is very high, right? So this is the motivation behind this square. Okay. So variance of x is nothing but your... So if you have some data points, this is summation from 1 to n, uh, this is your uh, x minus mu square divided by n, okay. Now, when we talk in terms of your uh, random variable, here the assumption for this formula was that every data point is equally likely, okay. So now again, like in the average case, what we did was we multiplied them with their probability. So here also rather than dividing by an constant average, uh, this probability of 1 by n. So for a random variable, we can define it in this form. x minus mu square into probability of x. Okay. So xi over here, right. This is what we can do, right. So this is nothing but. Uh, same as this is what is defined as expectation of x minus mu whole square. Okay. So, so variance of x is defined as expectation of x minus mu whole square, which is nothing but summation of 1 to n x minus mu square into probability of x. Okay. So, this is one thing, but uh, you can just uh, derive this thing that your expectation of x minus mu whole square is expectation of x square plus mu square minus 2 mu x. So this is a property of your expectation that you can split uh, whatever is inside. This is not a property of variance. This is applicable only for expectation. So whenever you are solving, if you have something inside variance, please do not split it. Okay. For expectation, you can split it this way. So you got expectation of x square minus expectation of 2 mu, two mu x plus expectation of mu square, okay. And this is, uh, this 2 mu is a constant value. That's why it comes out of the expectation and you get 2 mu expectation of x plus mu square. So this value is again mu. So this becomes minus 2 mu square plus mu square is minus mu square. And you get an alternate formula for your variance of x which is given as expectation of just x square minus mu square. How do you calculate this first part expectation of x square? This is nothing but summation of 1 upon n xi square into probability of xi. So in the mean, you used to do summation of xi p of xi. To calculate expectation of x square, you will do uh, summation of xi square probability of xi. Okay. So let's calculate uh, this variance of x when you are rolling a die. So earlier uh, we have already calculated the mean. The mean of this thing was 3.5. Now we have been asked to calculate the uh, variance. So the x takes five, uh, 6 values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 1 by 6, 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 this is 1 by 6. 6, right. So to calculate variance of x, we want expectation of x square minus mu square, right? This is some also denoted by mu. So we already have mu. We want to calculate expectation of x square, okay? So this is nothing but 1 square into 1 by 6 plus 2 square into 1 by 6 plus 3 square into 1 by 6 plus 4 square into 1 by 6 plus 5 square into 1 by 6 plus 6 square into 1 by 6. Okay, so you can just uh, evaluate this thing. This I guess would be, I have forgot that formula. 
So this should be 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36 by 6. Okay. So this is 5, 9, 14. Right. 14, 20, 30. 55, 61, uh, yeah. 91 by 6. Uh, there can be a calculation mistake here. So, what is your variance of x? Variance of x is nothing but 91 by 6 minus 3.5 whole square. So, you can evaluate this. So, yeah. Any doubts in this? So this was the content that I prepared for today. Uh, if you have any thing to ask related to whatever we have, I will wait for 2 minutes. If nobody has anything to ask, then I will end this session. Uh, good evening sir, uh, I am Satish here. Okay. Uh, in the current assignment, the question number 4, uh, I felt somewhere it is uh, the answers are not there. Uh, what we'll do if we feel that like 